John 14.15 If you love me, keep my commandments, Jesus said. 14.21 He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. John 15, 10. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Jesus' commandments. Jesus' commandments are divided into five broader categories. What Jesus commanded is disciples of his time. What Jesus commanded his people, uh, the people of his time. And number three, what Jesus commanded is to his disciples, which are even applicable to us today. Number four, what Jesus commanded to the crowd of his day, which is also applicable to us today. And number five, Jesus' general commandments. In the last three categories, there are many commandments of Jesus Christ. And we are meditating on ten commandments. And many other commandments are like to these ten commandments. And the first week, we studied one of the commandments of Jesus Christ. Receive ye the Holy Spirit. This is almost the last commandment Jesus told his disciples. And with the ascension and the descent of the Holy Spirit, the church was born. We take the ministry of the apostles, it's with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We take Paul's ministry, it is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In Cornelius' place, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So we have to receive the Holy Spirit. Father, we should repent, believe, and be baptized. Repent from our old lifestyle, from our ways. Repent from our old thought process. Re and turn to the Word of God. Number two, believe. Believe that Jesus is God. Believe that He is unchanging. Believe that He is the Lord of the who seek Him diligently. We need to be, be baptized. Be baptized. The Bible pattern of baptism is by immersion. The very word baptize means immerse. Yeah. Immerse, be baptized. You shall receive the Holy Spirit. Some people may receive the Holy Spirit even before baptism. If you keep my commandments, you'll be my disciples. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you love God, you'll keep His commandments. You'll receive the Holy Spirit. There will be no debate on it. Because you love God, you obey His commandments. Jesus loved God the Father and Jesus obeyed God's commandments. The more you love Jesus, the more you love, obey His commandments. You can't say, I really love Jesus but I don't keep His commandments. You can't really say, I want to abide in Jesus but I don't want to abide in His commandments. It's not possible. When you abide in Jesus, you abide in His commandments. In other words, when you abide in His commandments, you abide in Jesus. You can't say, I abide in Jesus. I am only in Jesus. The only thing I don't abide in His commandments. It's impossible. It's impossible. And Jesus said, repent, follow me. The very second commandment we meditated, it was not in that order, first, second, third. 
but of our repentance. When we receive Jesus Christ, when we repent and we baptize and when we receive the Holy Spirit, follow Jesus. What do we mean by following Jesus? Imitate Jesus. Imitate Jesus. Paul says, follow me as I follow Jesus. In other words, you can follow the saints, the living saints. You can follow the teachings, the lifestyle of the saints of yesteryears as they followed Jesus. No individual is a total role model, ruling model for us. Because so and so is doing that, I can't say I will do that. I have to follow him as he follows the word of God. Wherever he defers the Bible, we should defer him. Wherever that servant of God, that saint, defers the Bible, we should defer him. Where Abraham was not keeping up the commandments of God, where David was unable to keep up the commandments of God, he might not have got a right on it. We can't, we can't, we can't take David as a ruling man. We can learn the son from David's lifestyle. How he praised God. How he made a total surrender to God. How his heart was pleasing to God. How God is pleased with David. From that we learn the lessons. My dear brother, my dear sister, the second commandment, imitate Jesus. Imitate Jesus. What he would do in that situation, you do that in that situation. So in 2 Peter we are able to see that he has left his footsteps for us to follow him in imitating him. Glory be to the Lord's holy name. In the third commandment last week we meditated. See the kingdom of God. Gospel is also called Kingdom Gospel. Jesus came to this year to establish his kingdom. It's a kingdom principle. He is a king. Not just a, a revolutionist. Not just a preacher. Not just a miracle work. He is a king. He has got a kingdom. There's not an earthly kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. He came to establish his kingdom on the earth. Kingdom of God. There's the kingdom of heaven. And also we read about the kingdom of sun. So we talk about a lot of things about king. When Jesus called his people, his reign, he wanted to be their king. But they rejected God and they, uh, they did choose a king. Probably, even from the days of Solomon, the kingdom was divided, slowly disintegrated, deteriorated. And from the late seventh century, they never had the king. They never had the king. Till this day, they don't have the king. But Jesus revealed himself as a king of his way. A king to the church. Church is a kingdom. It has got its own rules and regulations. And he provides all our needs. So he has got a scheme for our health. Our lifestyle. He is a lord of course. His army, armies, his military, his force, God says. They got their advantage around us. He supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. So he is our king. He has to take care of us. We are in his kingdom. Church is a city, a nation. My dear brother, my dear sister. So, what is this kingdom principle? It's not based on some festivities that is not meat and drink, 
literally it means it's not based on some festivities. So this religion or this kingdom has got the month of January, New Year, and then we have got this Easter, Christmas, Good Friday, uh, this feast, that feast. Now this is not Christianity. So the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy of the Holy Spirit. That can be understood, righteousness of the Holy Spirit, peace of the Holy Spirit, and joy of the Holy Spirit. Righteousness, equity. What is right for God is right for me. A right standing with God. A life that's pleasing to God, living according to his, his rules and regulations, and equity. It is the same. My dear brother, my dear sister. So he talks about a life pleasing to God by living to his standard. The peace of the Holy Ghost. A life living with no anxiety, no worry, fullness of rest, well settled and secure assurance, born out of faith in Him, in His promises, in His power, trust, confidence, knowledge, peace. Number three, joy of the Holy Ghost. Your life that is carefree. Again, because of the peace. Again, because of the right standing with God. We are very happy. Carefree. Delightful. I love to use the word joy in right perception. Not jolly as the people of the world would think. Because they trust in the Lord. Because of the peace that passes all understanding. Because I know He cares for me. Because I know nothing, nothing will happen to me without His knowledge. Because I know He is a protection around me. Because I know He is Almighty. Because I know He is my God. Because I know He loves me. Because I know He takes care of me. I cause all my burden on Him. So that light life, feeling light, joy. Joy is not in an earthly way. Joy is not because of carnal pleasures. Joy because I know He knows. I know He knows. So that is the Kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, and joy of the Holy Ghost. Uh, this morning, we are coming to the fourth commandment. Not very much considered. Not very much considered by many. Nevertheless, it is not less important. But I can say it is very, very important. The fourth commandment is be perfect. Be perfect. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. A very powerful passage. Sermon on the Mount. There is another name the Bible scholars have given to that passage, Beatitude. Beatitude, Beatitude, people say they don't understand what they mean by Beatitude. Beatitude means this should be your attitude. This should be your attitude. Attitude towards God, attitude towards life, attitude towards God's laws, attitude towards God's kingdom, attitude towards others. This should be your attitude. Word and spirit are blessed. That should be your attitude. 
That should be your attitude. That's why this passage is called Beatitude. So when he was giving the Beatitude, this should be your attitude. The last verse, verse 48, he says, Be ye therefore, because this should be your attitude, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And Tamil is very powerful. Puranara irika kadami To be perfect is not an option, it's a commandment. Jesus didn't say, try to be perfect. Follow peace with all men. That is not, we must follow peace with all men. Here, be perfect. You must be perfect. There's no other option. Be perfect. Be perfect. Therefore, perfect. Why? Because this should be your attitude. Then only you can be blessed. You'll be blessed on the earth. This should be your attitude. If this has been your attitude, this should be your attitude. Therefore, be perfect. How should you be perfect? As your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So what do you mean by this word perfect? The Greek word is teleos. T-E-L-E-I-O-S. Teleos. Teleos means literally complete. Complete. Be complete. Uh, finish. Pure. Holy. Complete. Finish. Complete. Finish. Pure. Holy. We have to understand this very complete and finish in a proper sense. Somebody said, if a man is not married, he is not complete. If you are not married, you are not complete. And if you are married, you are finished. Not in that sense. The word complete, it's a finished product. Be a finished product. Be ye complete. When Jesus said perfect, complete. Some people might have studied up to standard 10. They might have faith in one paper. They don't complete it. They come thus far. Or they studied, they went to college. First year, second year, third year. They are here in one paper. They don't complete it. They don't complete it. You cannot go to next level unless you completed that. Say the a boy is exposed to a girl, a girl is exposed to a boy. They have all the negotiations. They bought all the bridal dress. He bought his suit. And the only thing they have to fix the marriage date. Everything is done. The date is not fixed. They are not husband and wife. Not because they bought salary. Not because he bought suit. Not because the parents met and had negotiations. It's a process that culminates at the wedding. So it cannot be complete without the wedding ceremony. It cannot be complete. The negotiation alone is not complete. Purchase alone, purchase alone doesn't make it complete. 
So the whole process must be complete with the wedding ceremony. Especially this marriage, solemnization of marriage. As per their religion, as per their denomination, as per their custom, there must be a ceremony. Then only this is complete. It doesn't mean that life is totally perfect or not. So the word what Jesus said, you must be complete. You must be totally perfect. The philosophical meaning of that word is consummate human integrity and virtue. Consummate, that's the complete, the, the last, ultimate, consummate, ultimate, human virtue, human character, integrity. This is the ultimate of the integrity. That should be your attitude. That should be where thought process, then you become perfect. My dear brother, my dear sister, what is meant by complete? Lacking nothing necessary to completeness. Lacking nothing necessary for completeness. You passed your B.Sc. first year, you passed your B.Sc. second year, the first semester you completed, six papers, all five papers you completed, you got one more paper to complete, you are not a graduate. You have a finished product, you are incomplete. It will somebody be incomplete. Lacking something for completeness. One paper you have to write. I think that you understand this perfectness is not that totally you are only good or virtuous. In SSLC, you clear all the five papers. In BRC, you clear all the papers. No idea. You are complete. You are complete. Every step. In that step, what is your completeness? So Jesus said, therefore, be complete. Be perfect. If this is one of the commandments of Jesus Christ. You should be perfect. And to make it clear, I'll show you one Bible passage. Matthew chapter 19. From verse 16 to 21. 19, 16 to 21. And behold, a man came up to Jesus saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? What good deed must I do? What good deed? I have to do something. His very concept is what he has to do, what's the good deed must I do to have eternal life. So basically what he thought, that I must do something, I must do something, that I must have eternal life. So he was not depending on grace. He was depending on what he could do. So Jesus told him, why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would eternal life, if you would desire eternal life, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. There are about 613 commandments. The Old Testament cause called us said. He said, keep the commandments. So he said to him, that man said to Jesus, which ones? You mean all the 613 commandments? Which ones? Probably he thought he would talk about Sabbath. He would talk about tithing. He would talk about offerings. He said, which ones? Jesus said, you shall not murder. 
You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. This is the book of Leviticus. Love your neighbor as yourself. So he was not talking about love God. He just love your neighbor. You want to do something good? You can love your neighbor. Only that what Jesus just stressed. Even from the Ten Commandments. Jesus was not talking about Sabbath. Jesus was not talking about idolatry. Jesus said, love your neighbor. Now listen, Kevin, many of you misunderstood this passage. What Jesus said, love your neighbor. So that man, in verse 20, the aim and second, all these I have kept. All these I have kept. I love my neighbor. I don't steal. I honor my parents. All these I I have kept. What do I shall lack? Or what do I still lack? Somehow, with all these things he felt, it's sufficient. But he felt, still he lacked something to inherit eternal life. Still he has to do something to inherit eternal life. He doesn't steal. He doesn't murder. He honors his parents. But there is still something that he could do. There is still something he could do. What's that I like? So now you have to understand this passage. The concept is, what should I do? Only we follow carefully, we'll understand because one of the one of the passages which is very much misunderstood. So what I lacked to inherit eternal life. So Jesus said, if you would be perfect, you want to make that complete. Make what complete? Loving your neighbor complete. Loving your neighbor complete. You want to make that complete. Loving your neighbor complete. Go, sell what you possess and give to the poor. Go, sell what you possess. Give to the poor. Now what's the problem? The question is, I do everything. I honor my parents. You honor your parents? Yes, you honor your parents. This, uh, what's the age of your mother? Uh, she is uh, 18. Okay. You honor your mother? Yes, I honor my mother. For the Christmas, what did you buy for you? I just took a pants and shirt, that's all. Okay, how much was the shirt? 3,000 rupees. What is the cost of the pants? It's another 2,000 rupees. Oh, nice. We love your mother, yes? So what did you buy for your wife? Uh, she bought a sari. How much is that? That was about 15,000 rupees. Oh, for your kid, we bought some three or four dresses. How much that cost? That cost another 15,000 rupees. Okay. What did you buy for your mother? What did you buy for your mother? Uh, she's better than. Okay, what did you buy for her? Uh, we bought her a 90. Uh, that's how much it was? It was 150 rupees. If you really love your mother, Go sell your pants, your shirt. Go everything what you possess.
My night is endured to the people, those who don't even have that night. By two or three better night is for your mother. You want to love your mother? You want to love her more than you love yourself? Still you are not in the area where you can do something. There is an area where you can help others. It's not a commandment, he's telling everybody that you have to totally sell everything, give to the poor, and become a beggar and follow me. Now you didn't mean that. Because let me know the area. When Mary was anointing Jesus with that perfumed oil, very costly oil, they said, oh, it can be sold and given to the poor. Jesus said, no, don't trouble her. She is doing as a token for my body. Poor is always with you. If you want to do something good for others, there is always a room for you to do good for others. Do something more, do something more. Love your mother more, love your wife more, love your husband more, love your neighbor more. You will never again. You can love them more. You can love them more. When you say, no, no, I need it, I don't have to give that to them, your love stopped. Your love stopped. My dear brother, my dear sister, more we love God, we spend more time with Him, we live more for the Lord. The moment when we think about ourselves, we stop living for God. We stop living for God. I can go on and on and on in this. So literally it means you have gone, if you want to be perfect, if you want to be perfect, there's still the area where you can be perfect. You can pause, move on to perfection. My dear brother, my dear sister. So Jesus said to him, if you will be perfect yourself, that you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. So when you give to the poor, it doesn't mean that you become pump. You also have got your money with a, with a bank here, a possession, as an asset, as an estate. You will have a possession, your asset, in heaven. In heaven, if you truly believe in heaven, you will have your asset there. Jesus didn't say that you become poor. Jesus didn't say that you become pauper. Instead of keeping your possession here, keep your possession there, which is more real. Heaven will never go back, no mark will eat it. No erosion will take place. But the question is whether I believe heaven or not. If you truly believe heaven, you will have your savings in heaven. You will have your savings in heaven. When we truly believe in heaven. For the we spend for the heavenly purpose. And the more you spend for the Lord, the more He will give you. You will receive that he has, there is no more place to receive. He is not a debtor. More you sow, more you reap. When you reap more, you sow more. When you sow more, you reap more. And your account will increase in heaven. We must have an interesting transaction with the Lord. The Lord wants to bless His people. My dear brother, my dear sister. So it's very interesting. In that passage, Jesus did say that you become poor and poor. No, no, Jesus didn't want him to become poor. Jesus didn't want him to become pauper. Jesus wanted him to have his treasure in a better bank. In a more stable 
financial institution. But it's a question whether you believe it or not. That sowing and reaping is based on faith. And a farmer sows his seeds on the sand, on the earth, on the mud. What a great confidence he must have. There must be rain, there must be proper water supply, there should not be any pestilence, so many constraints. If something goes wrong, the seed that he has thrown into that mud will become waste. But in faith he is doing it. This one grain will bring 30, 60, 100. He believes that. We can believe this earth. Can't we believe in heaven? So that man became sad and went away, not because Jesus told him to sell everything he had. He could not believe in eternal life. He wanted to inherit eternal life, but he didn't believe in eternal life. He didn't believe there is a life afterwards. He didn't want to say for the life that is there afterwards. But you don't believe in eternal life in the world. What can you do to inherit eternal life? You know, you are not believing in eternal life. So it's a very deep story. My dear brother, my dear sister, the purpose is you must be perfect. This perfection is not a totality. Perfection in that level. When you complete all the papers in standard 10, you are perfect. You, com you are complete. You are complete at your standard 10. Then in plus 2, with no ideas, you completed, you passed. Even after 3 attempts or 4 attempts, you are complete in that stage. Then you joined your graduation course, BSc. You wrote all papers, no ideas. You become a graduate, you are complete in that level, you are complete in that level. With marriage, in that level you are complete. You have got a child, a parenthood, now complete. Your child gets married, you have completed your duties. Your child becomes a mother, you become a grandmother. You become a grandmother. So this complete perfection is not the totality. In that level you are perfect. In that level you finish. You are total, you are holy in that level. There may be levels to go. So my dear brother, my dear sister, we should desire that perfection in James chapter 1 verse 4. James chapter 1 verse 4. But let patience have a perfect work that he may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. This is what exactly Jesus meant by be perfect. He entire, wanting nothing. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 28 and 29, Colossians 1, 28 and 29, whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in, in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. So today, I, 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 I know that I'm having a very difficult subject because it's not mostly meditated on. It's not considered mostly. The very purpose of preaching to present every man, every man, every woman, educated or not, rich or poor, whatever the background may be, every man, perfect, entire, nothing uh, wanting, present before Jesus Christ. He says, we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, 
which worketh in, in me mightily. That should be the ministry of every servant of God. They endure, they pursue, they pursue the very purpose. The Lord has given me a ministry. What is the purpose of this ministry? I should present everyone, everyone, teaching everyone, warning everyone, in all wisdom, to present everyone perfect, entire, wanting nothing before God. My dear brother, my dear sister, last week after the English service, one of our brothers was talking to me. In a different context, he said, in most places, in most places, the ministry, what they call ministry, is not a Bible-based ministry. I don't know, he said, even divorce, immoral life, has become very common with the servants of God. What are the cause me? I love to tell you. According to the Bible, the very purpose of ministry, preaching, teaching, exhortation, with all the community I tell you, with that objective I am doing the ministry. These little boys, they should become perfect. Many of we don't want to be perfect. We don't want to be taught, we don't want to be entertained. As Paul said, the way I follow Jesus, I want you to follow me. If I do ministry only for the tithing, whether you come at 8 o'clock, you will give the tithe. Whether you come at 9 o'clock, you will give the tithe. Whether you come at 10 o'clock, you will give the tithe. Even if you don't come also, in absence, you may send the tithe. If I do ministry for tithing, I will not be worried about you. I will not be worried about you. But our ministry is to make it entire, make it complete, wanting nothing, to present you perfect in Christ. That's why we suffer, we endure. We do that according to the spirit that works in us, according to the might that works in us. My dear brother, my dear sister, our uh, boys would be late. I think, oh, what happened, what happened, what happened? They're coming in the bike, they're coming in the psyche. They must have reached by now. What happened? Then I showed them. Well, you could have told me. If you are late, you should have told me that you are coming late. So what is the purpose? What is the purpose? I want to be perfect. And I want the believers to be perfect, entire, lacking nothing. They should become responsible citizens. Honorable, trustworthy, perfect. My dear brother, my dear sister, I can go on and on. And I love to show you one powerful passage. One powerful passage from the Bible to show you how that is being perfect. Colossians chapter, uh, sorry, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. But I'm going to read this whole chapter that we understand the totality of what Paul said about what Jesus said about perfection. So please follow with me. I'll start with verse 15 first. Let us therefore, 
as many as be perfect, be thus minded. If you want to be perfect in your studies, in your career, whatever you do, if you are not perfect, there is in trouble, there is a sin. Thayir kadanji varupu thaliya putu vashtra. Thayir kadanji varupu. Kadanji venna adika pono. So there is more thayir. Kadayir adiputu. Beating, 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 beating. Tirelessly beating. Because they want to take butter. In those days they will be doing it manually. Thayira, Kadayira, Kadayira, Kadayira. They put, 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 Kadayira. Rumba, they take pins. They very purpose to take butter out of it. By the time Thayira, Kadayira, butter it is a man of the manban or the jibuchi. All their efforts have become based. It's not complete. When it is not complete. Kadayira, knowledge is not complete. So those who want to be perfect, those who want to complete your task, that you have to complete your studies, you have to complete your homework, you have to complete your ministry, you have to complete the purpose for which an assignment is given to you, you have to make it complete. You are not going to be awarded that you tried. Have you completed it? In your school, in your college, in your work spot, in your, uh, in your tasks. You are awarded that you have completed it. You are not awarded that you have attempted on it. Whether it's for this son or for that son, it's the same. You have to complete your project. You have to complete your course. You have to complete your Christian life. You have to complete your calling. So it's a very powerful passage for your practical living. Therefore, as many as be perfect, those who want to be complete, be thus minded. Have this mindset, not only for your spiritual life, even for your secular life, in your family life. This will be very, very useful. You want to make biryani? You bought butter, you bought rice, you cut the chicken, you want to have the chicken 65. By shedding sweat, by shedding tears, by shedding blood, when you are peeling onion, you shed some tears. In the kitchen, you shed some sweat. When you are cutting chicken, you shed some blood. You have blood, chicken blood. With all your efforts, you arrange everything. Only you don't have salt. You got everything, you got mutton, you got chicken, you got rice, you got everything, everything, everything. Only no salt. What happened to your brain? And only one thing, you forgot to put salt. What? It's a simple thing. Only I forgot salt. One day in the house, the husband was, when he was at the dining table, he shouted at his wife, how many times I should tell you? Don't cook anything talking to the phone. Don't cook anything talking to the phone. She said, what happened? What happened? See, in the Russell, there is no salt, there is no pepper. Always you talk to somebody in the phone and you do cooking. She said, how many times I tell you don't watch the TV and eat? You are not using Russell, you are pouring water. My dear brother, my, it cannot be complete. So those who want to be perfect, those who want to make things complete, be thus fine. We just read this whole chapter. It will be a great blessing to you. Now finally, my brother, and rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to, the, to me indeed, it is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, Beware of the uh, concession. These are talks about the Jews. I don't want to get into that more. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus 
and have no confidence in the flesh. See, so we have that circumcision, but we worship God in the spirit, not because of that circumcision. We have done circumcision. But our confidence is not in circumcision. We rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh, not in this uh, circumcision. Though might also confidence in the flesh, if any other man think that uh, he had a wear of, uh, he might trust in the flesh anymore. If anybody can think about, I'm circumcised, I've done this, I've done that, if they can think about their flesh, I can think more about my flesh. Uh, he talks about him, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin and the Hebrew of the Hebrew, as touching the law of Pharisees concerning zeal, uh, persecuting the church, uh, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless, etc., etc., etc. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. What things are gained for me? I counted loss for Christ. How can I, how can I, as a teacher, teacher? Okay, I have studied, I came first in standard seven. In standard seven, I was school topper. In all the eight sections, I came first. It's good. Having confidence in that will you help him stand at eight. And he says, Count that as a loss. Now you stay. I did that, I did that, I did that will be a loss. Will be a loss. At times it will give over confidence. Huh? That I can manage. One billion, ah, that I can manage. One billion, I know. I have done chapati, I have done payasam, hot biryani I can do. So Paul says, all these things what were considered to be a gain, count that a loss. If you want to be perfect, be just fine. Yea, doubtless. And I count all these things but last for the, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them, but them that I may win Christ. Now I got a new competition, a new venture. The past success are good, but now, all those things are done. I have to win Christ. I have to win Christ. So what he does, what he does, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by, uh, by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of the sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not, so this is his objective, he has got an objective. I must reach heaven. Your objective, I must have a stress. Your object, I must have good biryani. So you wanted to start with the biryani and you can't give a car a pious. Your objective, I must win Christ. I must have fought in the resurrection. When Jesus comes, I must be found in him. Your objective. I must pass my standard 10, your objective. At least at an average I must take at least 35 percent and somehow I must pass. You have got an objective. I must get 80 percent, you have got an objective. 
I must give 100 percent, you're going to object to you. I must have an aggregate of 98 percent, you're going to object to you. Paul had an object to you. I must be in Christ, I must be found in Christ when he comes. Otherwise everything will become a waste. My sufferings will become a waste. I must have part in the resurrection, the resurrection of the saints. I must be raptured. I got an objective. I got an objective. So I move towards an objective. So those who want to be perfect, be just mind. Number one, you must have an objective. You must have an objective. And you must move towards that objective. You cannot be just talking about your past glories. Suppose a political party says, in the last election, we had a sweep. We were able to win 80% of the votes. But the use of talking about your past glory. If you stand for the election, at least will you be able to win one seat? Will you be able to get your deposit? So only talking about the past glory is not going to help you in the next election. What's your objective? How many seats do you want to win? You want to have the government continue. What should you do for the people? How will you bring the people to uh, people hard to elect you again? So that's an objective. I must get 80 percent as an objective. And the Christian objective, Paul was narrating very clearly. I must participate, I must be a part of the resurrection. Somehow I must be taken up when Jesus comes. All things I count lost, not only lost, now I count them time. My one objective. So if you want to be perfect, First, have a clear cut objective in your life. I'm just talking about class situation, I'm talking about cooking, I'm talking about the work situation. Only, I'm trying to try to go your eternal purpose. Otherwise, all these things will become based. If you can't go to heaven, and somebody taking, coming first, in the college and going to hell, or coming last in the college and going to hell, what difference it is? Finally, you are going to hell. Your first class and uh, failure is not going to count everything in the hell. Our objective is we want to go to hell. That's our aim. That's our goal. That's our goal. So he had a very clear cut objective. And with that objective, what he is doing, he was that by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. By any means I must attain the resurrection of the dead. Twelve. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. So number two, you want to be perfect. Number two, you should not think that you are perfect. We want to be perfect. That's the beauty of perfection. You those who want to be perfect, you should not think that you are perfect. He said, I don't think that I had already attained. I have already attained. I don't think that I have already attained. If we want to be perfect, be the same. What should be your mindset? You must have a goal. Somehow I must have the part of the resurrection. Number two, don't think that you are perfect. Don't think that you are attained. And number three, the same verse we read, uh, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Apprehend means 
காட்டுறது சே ஐ ஃபாலோ அவுட் அப்ரேஷன் பிடிக்கிறது ஐ வாண்ட் அப்ரேஷன் எப்போது பிலிஸ் அப்ரேஹண்டட் தி தீஃப் தென் யூ அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் தி வேர்ட் அப்ரேஷன் தி பிலிஸ் அப்ரேஹண்டட் தி தீஃப் சோ ஐ வாண்ட் அப்ரேஷன் புடிச்சது எப்படியாவது புடிச்சது தேடி புடிச்சது as the police apprehended the thief i should apprehend apprehend what for what jesus apprehended me or police car pudikira mana order eppudu enna pudichittaru edukku enna pudichittaru edukkaga order enna theedi pudicharu adha na pudichukunde adu i follow it i do pretty i do everything so if you want to be perfect if you want to pass standard 10 don't believe don't depend on magic work hard do everything that's possible do everything that's possible mai varatam bara kandunja seri aitmeyam keda கருமேட்டான் எவ்வளவு தீமையும் மேற்கொண்டார் யாருக்கு உட்காந்து வெட்டிக்கிறது வீணுக்கிறது பேசிக்கிட்டு இருக்க மாட்டேன் கருமமே கண்டாயிரம் ஐ காட் சம்திங் கண்ட்ரிபியூட்டி போயிட்டு கண்ணுஸ் So the number three, do everything that I follow after, that I may apprehend for which I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Verse 13, Brethren, I call not myself to be apprehended, but there is one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. So number four. forgetting those things which are behind it's not the things which are behind and not at the back things which would pull me back say no to the things that would pull me back so i want to go for a race i must reduce my weight i must become as thin as possible i'm taking my bike for a race all the unnecessary parts even the muffler i should the cabbie i should remove the mud guard i should remove i must keep my bike as light as possible because it's a competition i cannot keep a bag on my back and i can't run the race what all that can pull me back forget it forget it leave it leave it my objective i must get first place what all that would pull me back from that objective leave that forgetting that which are behind forgetting things which will pull me back that friendship that tv that uh, i mean all those things similarly i want to be raptured my objective i got an objective so i don't think that i have attained it but i do everything to attain that what i do everything that will pull me back from that object i removed and everything that will help me go forward everything that would help me to attain that goal i do it munna vela nokina everything that will help me to go forward if i talk with this girl i lose my objective this friendship will make me lose my objective i leave that friendship this friendship will help me to attain my objective i cherish that friendship 
If I spend time with this boy, only we talk about uh, game, we talk about movie, we talk about cinema, we talk about that comedy, we talk about this, we talk about that. I cannot attain for which I am apprehended. If I go with this boy, he talks about prayer, he talks about Bible, he talks about church. If I think I will be it's boring, I cannot attain my objective. It's very simple. So if you want to attain your objective, those who want to be perfect, be just minded. You must know whom you should leave and you must know where you should clean. You must know what you should leave and you must know what you should clean. That's the simple thing what Paul said. Uh, uh, I, uh, verse 13, I do forgetting those things which are behind <coughs> and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press forward. The literally, I strain every nerve. Press forward. In today's word, I can say, I strain every nerve. I strain every nerve. As I said about biryani, you have to strain every nerve. As I said, sweating, blood, tears. Every nerve you strain to make it good. You want to attain a good billion. To come first, strain every man. The Lord will make you ride on the high places of the earth. If you're very successful in your business, in your work spot, strain every man. Press toward that mark. But all these things are earthly, temporal, mortal. But eternal glory. To be a part in the resurrection. To be taken up in rapture. To go to heaven. To inherit eternal life. Strain every nerve. It's not a game walk. Strain every nerve. It's not cutting a button. Press forward. Press forward. Is there anybody here who has uh, ever climbed a, in a small mountain? Climbed a small mountain? I think only three people. The more you go higher, the more you'll be gossiping. <sighs> Now. 
And let us will remain. That will not work out. That will not work out. Verse 16, nevertheless, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. You have applied a rule of going forward, going forward. You have come up to this level. Apply the same rule and go further. Apply the same rule, go further. Apply the same rule, go further. From there I come here. Appa. Is it my name? You think on the easy of your good duty here? No. You come the swamp. With all the efforts. Straining every nerve. Forsaking the things which would pull you back. Embracing the things which will take you forward. You come up to this level. Still you press forward. More costly. Still you press forward. You cannot rest on your goal. A good horseman. A sailor. He cannot rest on his goal. What level you have reached? Same mindset. I must go forward. Many times I told you, the love and affection I tell you, the moment you can't go forward, the fall begin. The moment you can't go forward, your backsliding will begin. Nevertheless, that we have already attained. Let us walk by the same rules, the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Verse 17. <coughs> Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. whatever the objectives of others, <coughs> their ministry, their God is their belly. They do ministry with different objectives. But Paul says, our objective, we believe in heaven. We believe that our citizenship is in heaven. We believe that Jesus will come from there. We believe that we are prepared for heaven. Jesus shall, Jesus shall change our wild body that it may be fashioned like unto them. <coughs> His glorious body according to the working
then send it to her. Then maybe graduation. Then maybe post graduation. You are moving towards perfection. And every level you must be perfect. My dear brother, my dear sister, we <coughs> got a number of verses. We should be perfect in the will of God. We must be perfect in our understanding of spiritual matters. We must be perfect in love. The Bible says we must be perfect man. As Jesus Christ was a perfect man. Ephesians 4.13 As we did earlier in Colossians 1.28 um, Whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. James 3.2 For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word if you don't offend in your word, if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and, uh, and able also to <coughs> burden the whole body. It's a perfect man, my dear brother, my dear sister. This perfection is to your level. What all God has spoken to you, when you do that, you are perfect. Somebody has not taken baptism. The Lord speaks to that person. When he obeys the Lord in baptism, he is perfect. When he obeys the Lord in some other teaching, what the Lord is talking to him, what Lord, that level we have attained. From that level we go to higher level. From that level we go to higher level. Law upon law, precepts upon precepts, commandments upon commandments. Till you become a perfect man like Jesus Christ. For this perfection, we move toward that perfection. I just show you two verses to conclude. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. Let us go on unto perfection. Let us go on unto perfection. And Revelation 22, 11. With this I can do. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. My dear brother, my dear sister, more towards than perfection. We should be perfect. We should be perfect in the will of God. We should be perfect in love. We should be perfect in our words. We should be perfect. It's one of the commandments of Jesus. Be perfect. Many people may not love this. A series we are meditating on Jesus' commandments. Not very difficult things. Only from the gospel books. Jesus said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, follow me. Jesus said, seek ye the kingdom of God. Jesus said, be ye therefore perfect. If you want to be perfect, all those who want to be perfect, Paul says, be thus mind. What should be your mindset? I must have a goal. I must reach heaven. That's my goal. I must, I must be found in Christ when he comes. That's my goal. I press towards that goal. I don't think that I have already attained it. If I am righteous, I want to be righteous still. If I am holy, I want to be holy still. If I am doing ministry, I want to do ministry still. I want to press forward. To what level I have come? From that level, with the same rule, I apply the same rule. 
72 I got saved. God apprehended me. I started pressing toward the mark for which he apprehended me. The same rule I am applying. The same rule I am applying. That I could be holy. That I could move forward. Forgetting her. Throwing away those things which would pull me back. Embracing those things that would help me to achieve my goal. I press forward. Those who want to be perfect, be thus minded. Doubling about this perfection in detail. What are the areas you have to be perfect? What is perfection in love? What is perfection in the will of God? God will be study. It's an entirely different topic. Today the time may not be sufficient to dwell on that. But they are very simple Jesus' commandments. If you love Jesus, you keep his commandments. If you love Jesus, you will keep his commandments. If you want to abide in Jesus, abide, be steadfast in his commandments. Receive the Holy Spirit, follow Jesus, seek in the kingdom of God, be perfect. As your Heavenly Father is perfect, He is complete. Be complete, shall we pray. Dear Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, Lord. Thank you for all your abundant blessings, O Lord. Continue to bless you. Help us to be perfect. Help us understand the concept of being perfect, O Lord. Being complete. Being total. In you. Bless your people. You and the world, O oh Lord. Help everybody to be perfect, O oh Lord. A perfect wife. A perfect husband. A perfect daughter. A perfect son. A perfect brother, sister. A perfect believer. A perfect pastor, a perfect servant of God, a perfect employee, a perfect employer, help us to be perfect, O oh Lord. We thank you, we praise you, worship you, bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray.